Good evening. Time for our bedtime Bible story tonight. And the story's title is Joseph, a Prisoner in Egypt. From Genesis 37, verse 36, down through chapter 40 and verse 23. At the end of their long, dusty journey, the Ishmaelites arrived with Joseph in Egypt. Here, Joseph found himself surrounded by a dark-skinned people who spoke a different language from his own. And here he saw large cities, wonderful temples for idol worship, mighty pyramids, and the great river Nile. How strange all these things must have seemed to this boy who had always lived in tents. The Ishmaelites took Joseph to the city where the king of Egypt lived, and there they sold him to an officer in the king's army. Joseph could never forget how terror-stricken he had felt when his own brother sold him as a slave. But he was a sensible lad, and when he realized that he was indeed a slave, he tried to be obedient to his master. And God did not forget him, nor the wonderful dreams he had given to Joseph when he was yet at home. God was now preparing Joseph for the time when those dreams should come true. Although Joseph could not understand God's plan, yet he trusted in God to help him do right. The Egyptian officer who bought Joseph was named Potiphar. He was a very rich man and had many other servants. Joseph soon learned that the speech of the Egyptians, and because he showed a cheerful, obedient spirit, Potiphar took special notice of him. He saw that Joseph was always honest and that he had a good understanding of business affairs. After a while, he gave all the oversight of his household and his riches into Joseph's care. And for Joseph's sake, God blessed the Egyptian officer with greater riches. For several years, Joseph remained in Potiphar's house, a slave in name only, for in reality, he was the ruler over his fellow slaves and the caretaker of his master's wealth. Then there came a sudden change. Potiphar's wife was not a good woman, and she often tried to persuade Joseph to do wickedly. Because he would not, she finally became angry with him and accused him falsely to her husband. Potiphar believed the lie that she told, and to punish Joseph, he thrust the noble young man into the king's prison. How cruel this was. Perhaps Joseph wondered why he must suffer so often because of the sins of other people. To be a slave had seemed bad enough. To be thrust into prison while trying to do right was even worse. No doubt Joseph suffered much because of this unjust act. But Joseph was not the kind of person to fret and pout because of trouble. He showed a cheerful spirit even in the prison, and his manly face soon attracted the attention of the prison keeper. Day after day, the keeper watched him, and finally he decided that Joseph was the very one he needed to help care for the other prisoners. After a while, he gave Joseph full charge of all the prisoners, and doubtless Joseph was once more as busy as he had been in Potiphar's house. About that time, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, became much displeased with two of his special servants, the chief butler who served him with wines and the chief baker who served him with bread. Because of his displeasure, he put both of them into prison, and Joseph cared for them there. One morning, Joseph found these men looking unusually sad. Why are you so troubled, he asked, and they replied, We have had strange dreams, and there is no one here to tell us the meaning of them. In the king's court, there are wise men who often tell the meaning of dreams, but we cannot send for them to come to us in prison. Surely God knows the meaning of your dreams, Joseph told them, and I am his servant. Tell me, therefore, what you have dreamed. He may reveal to me the true meaning. The chief butler was first to tell his dream. I saw a grapevine with three branches, he said, and while I looked upon it, the buds shot forth and became blossoms, and the blossoms became clusters of grapes. Then I squeezed the juice of the grapes into Pharaoh's cup, which I held in my hand. This I gave to the king as I used to do when I stood by his table. God made Joseph to know the meaning of the dream, and Joseph said, The three branches that you saw are three days. After that time, I beg you to remember, uh, there are three days. After that time, you will be restored to your former position in the king's palace. 
but I beg you to remember me when it shall be well with you again and make mention of me to Pharaoh. For I have, stolen from, have been stolen from my father's house and sold a captive among these people. And for no wrongdoing of mine have I been thrust into this prison. The chief baker now told what his dream had been and wished Joseph to tell its meaning. There were three baskets upon my head, he said, and in the topmost ones, one there were baked meats for the king's table. While I held them, the birds flew down and ate the contents of the topmost basket. Through the wisdom of God, Joseph knew the meaning of this dream, too. He felt sorry to tell its meaning, though, because he knew that his words would bring more grief to the chief baker's heart. But the chief baker expected him to tell. So he said, In your dream, the three baskets mean three days. At that time, the king will take you from prison and hang your body upon a tree and the birds will eat your flesh. Three days later, Pharaoh held a great feast for his servants in honor of his birthday. During the feast, he removed both the chief butler and the chief baker from the prison and disposed of them just as Joseph had said he would. But the chief butler soon forgot about Joseph and two years passed before he remembered to speak to the king about the one who had been kind to him while he was in prison. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the example of Joseph in being faithful and being kind and being obedient and making the best of a difficult situation while he was a slave and then while he was in prison. And help us, Father, to respond in a positive way to the difficulties that come upon us in life. And help us to not hold grudges against people when they don't do what we expect them to do. Help us to return good for evil, just as our Lord Jesus would do. We thank you that he died on the cross, rose again from the dead, living proof that we can be rescued from our sins by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. Good night. Good night.